Hey, what's up guys, Zach here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to expand your studio's input and output setup. If you're like me and have spare or old gear lying around, you may be surprised with what options you have available without having to purchase new gear or spend more than you have to. Let's get started. So let's say you're a small home studio and you want to track live drums. The minimum number of mic pre's you probably want is eight, and this will allow you to do a basic multi mic drum setup, uh, including, for example, kick, snare top, snare bottom, floor tom, rack tom, overhead left, overhead right, and uh, a room mic. Now, in most cases, if you're running a standard two-channel audio interface, uh, such as a Scarlett 2i2, uh, with only two inputs and outputs, um, non-expandable, meaning you can't plug in another mic preamp, more on that later, you're probably going to need to buy another eight-channel interface, such as a Scarlett 18i20, or a uh, PreSonus Audio Box 1818, which both give you eight mic pre's and another 10 inputs you can expand to through ADAT and SPDIF. But take a look at the back of your interface anyways. If you see ports with connectivity labeled as ADAT or optical, you may be in luck. ADAT optical or light pipe, as it's known, is a way of delivering up to eight channels of audio through an optical cable, which uses light to transmit digital information. So my studio runs uh, an RME Babyface, which is a two channel uh, mic pre input device. However, it comes with optical input and output. So I can take an eight channel preamp with an optical out and connect that to my Babyface to get another eight audio channels, bringing my total input count up to 10. This is much cheaper than outright buying another interface with eight channels or a mixer. So I have an old Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40, which has eight mic pre's and optical input and output installed in my rack mount. And I use this Focusrite device to expand my Babyface's IO to 10 channels of input and output capability. But let's say you don't have optical SPDIF or any other way to connect additional interfaces or preamps to your main uh, preamp or interface. There is one more solution, and that is running an aggregate device, meaning we can use software inside your computer to run multiple hardware interfaces while using all of their input and output capabilities simultaneously. So I've borrowed my friend's Scarlett 2i2, and it has two XLR slash TRS inputs and uh, two, two TRS outputs. So what I can do is take this Scarlett and plug it into my computer with the USB um, cable and use it in conjunction with my RME Babyface, giving me uh, four inputs and outputs. For Mac users, you simply have to access uh, your audio device uh, control panel. There should be a, a plus button. You can press that and create a new aggregate device. In there, you can add in the inputs and outputs from your interfaces you have connected to your computer. On Windows, it's slightly more complicated. You'll need to download ACO for all. So go to acoforall.com. Once you've downloaded and installed um, ACO for all, uh, go ahead and connect to your audio devices. Um, open up your DAW and then um, open your device setup um, or whatever it's called where you access um, your audio interface for, uh, for, your, for your DAW. So for your VST audio system, you're gonna wanna change it from uh, one of your interfaces to ACO for all. Now you're gonna wanna go to the ACO for all uh, control panel. Also uh, take a note here, you should be able to see inputs from uh, all of your interfaces you have connected to your computer. If you don't see them, try closing your DAW, replugging the interfaces. If you still don't see them, try restarting your computer. Uh, you might need to do this after you've installed ACO for all to get it to recognize uh, your interfaces. I'm not seeing my Scarlett focus right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reboot Cubase. So go ahead and don't save. Unplug my Scarlett, plug it back in, load up Cubase again. Okay, so I'm in Cubase and now I'm gonna go back to my device setup and okay, good, I can see my Scarlett, uh, the ports are being recognized, so I'm gonna go to my control panel, and uh, what you wanna do is inside of the ACO for all control panel, you wanna make sure that uh, all of your interfaces that you want to use to record simultaneously are uh, powered on, so just press that little power on button. Uh, make sure that the ACO buffer size is the same for uh, all of your interfaces. This will help to keep the latency between your interfaces at a nominal level. So go ahead and close that. 
press OK, and now go to your VST connection. So this is where your inputs and outputs are located. And what you're gonna wanna do is add uh, the corresponding number of inputs that you have based on the total number of inputs across all of your devices. So I've got two on my baby face and two on my Scarlet, so I'm gonna go ahead and add four inputs. The important thing is to ensure that the device port is set accordingly. Now mine's gone ahead and automatically set the correct um, device uh, inputs. So uh, the first channel should be the first input from your first interface, uh, second channel the second input from your first interface, and then so on and so forth. So just make sure they're all connected there and that's good. Okay, so now we wanna to test to make sure that we can record from uh, both devices simultaneously. So I'm just gonna record two channels. I'm gonna record one from a baby face and one from my focus right. This mic right here is hooked up to channel two on my baby face. And then I'm gonna use channel one on my focus right and plug in an SM58. Go ahead and plug that in. Set the levels, yeah, that's probably good somewhere in there, maybe boost it up a little bit. I'm just gonna hold this mic here. I'm gonna record, enable both tracks, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, this is a test. I am recording to both the RME Babyface and the uh, Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. And I can see levels appearing on both channels, so that's a good sign. So the uh, the 2i2 was a little bit quiet because I, I had the SM pretty far away from me and I didn't do a, a level check, so I'll just bring the level up there. And uh, let's go ahead and play back and hear how it sounds. Okay, this is a test. I am recording to both the RME Babyface and the uh, Focusrite Scarlet 2. Awesome, so I've recorded from two interfaces simultaneously. Now you can hear there is a delay, and this is the catch to recording with multiple interfaces. If you're doing anything that is time sensitive, so anything that needs to be synchronized, so like live drums and stuff like that, um, the aggregate device is not a good solution because you're gonna get um, delays and you might get different delays on every single recording, which would just be insanely time consuming to correct for if you're in a studio session or anything like that. But yeah, that's a few ways you can expand your recording studio's input and output capability. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, remember to leave a like. Also remember to check out these other great videos on tips, tricks, and techniques for achieving great drum tracks and mixes. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.